strong community contains a lot of moving parts. Good jobs, a healthy economy, and maybe most importantly, pride. At POET, we are proud to be doing our part, creating new local jobs and spurring economic development while producing products that improve lives around the globe. Together, we're not just working to serve our community, but to change the world. And that's something we can all be proud of. See the world differently with POET. Allen Davis Insurance Agency, with 30 years commitment to the community, providing quality insurance services. Allen is a business owner and an active farmer, and he knows firsthand the pressures of running your farming operation. Call Allen today and ask about coverage for your farm, your vehicles, your equipment, crops, and more. Call 1-800-686-2148. That's 1-800-686-2148. United Equity, Inc. is your locally owned farm-based cooperative. For agronomic services, we offer seed and a full line of dry and liquid fertilizer, as well as soil sampling by soil type, grid, or management zone to best utilize your fertilizer application. Call us to discuss agronomic services customized for you. Reach your best yields with United Equity, serving Allen, Auglaize, Mercer, Putnam, and Van Wert counties. Visit us on the web at unitedequityinc.com. From the 99th annual Ohio Farm Bureau's annual meeting, I have the pleasure of visiting now with Chris Weaver of Williams County. Uh, Chris is a trustee and we want to get into the responsibilities of what all the trustees do. But first of all, Chris, uh, welcome and I'd like to ask you, can you describe what the family operation is back home? Yeah, so the family operation in Williams County is mainly dairy farms. We milk uh, 3,000 cows and farm uh, corn, grain, beans, and wheat, and alfalfa, kind of like the rest of us. We farm about 5,000 acres, so we're uh, pretty busy up there in the northwest of Ohio. Now, dairy has its own uh, set of challenges apart from what some of the other farm operations are doing. Uh, what might some of those be, and, and how do you uh, get past some of those challenges? Well, obviously, as soon as you, I guess the first thing I would say is that when you bring a living animal or living being into the situation, there's a lot more science and medicine and veterinary care that we deal with and, and we have highly educated staff but then also in, in today's world especially in the Lake Erie watershed uh, a key component is uh, you know water quality and paying attention and making sure that we're doing the best we can to the environment uh, managing our manure in an appropriate way getting it out there at the right time and really protecting the environment and I, and I think sometimes that's a misconception that us farmers all understand that we really believe and want to take care of the environment because we live in the environment and and I'd say, especially this time of year as we're trying to get things wrapped up for the fall, that manure management uh, is probably the number one thing we're worried and paying attention to. So. Of course, uh, with the water quality, that's been in the news the last two, three, four years. And so farmers are, are one of the, the components of making that water quality, water quality the best it can possibly be. Yeah, that, I mean, that is exactly right. We, we're stewards of millions I believe of acres in that in in our region and um, while we can't control everything we can we can work really hard to to be stewards of that water quality that the city of Toledo deals with or or the people along the Maumee River deal with as well so well, now Chris has been a trustee for around four years Chris what does a trustee for the Farm Bureau do so a trustee there's 26 trustees for the for the state of Ohio and uh each trustee has four counties, but then there are also four other trustees that are regional trustees. And we, um, as a trustee, we really are supposed to bring back information from our local counties and come to the state board and help, you know, develop policy and figure out how we're going to educate others and um, just do the best we can for our local farmers at the state level. We, we, and we will help them also assist them at the local level with any pol political and educational things they need. But it's really an interaction between the state and the local. I guess that's what uh, the grassroots does to make uh, the organization itself so in tune with what's happening at the local level. Yeah, that, I, I'm glad you brought grassroots up because that, I would say that's exactly right. And Farm Bureau has such an awesome and incredible grassroots uh, program and just exemplified by this meeting and the and the 330 people that are here um, bringing ideas and working together and then we have this one event but throughout the year there's always things going on and how do we communicate and and make sure the state's pushing the issues that are necessary 
and uh, it's it's a really neat organization to be involved in and be at my level and being able to interact with both state, local, and even a little bit on the federal side. I suppose it's uh, a, a thrill for you to take some really good ideas from the local level, from the people that you, you see more often, and then when the trustees get together, you become educated with different parts of the state. You know, yeah, the first year I was on, I'm used to Northwest Ohio, and I should, for every year, I shouldn't say, just that every year there's some issue that I'm like, oh, wow, we have to deal with that in Ohio? You know, oil and gas was one. I mean, you just never had an imagination of that. And then you have the issues going on on the south. And, yeah, it really opens your eyes to how different the issues are for farmers, for all farmers across the state, and how my issue may be totally opposite another farmer's issue, but we can work together and come up and create policy that really uh, works for all of us. And then I suppose, too, then when you have uh, successes like CAUV this past year, uh, that has to make you satisfied and, and, and really excited about being in an organization that sort of uh, uh, spearheads some of the policy. Exactly. CAUV is something that we've been working on for years at different levels and protecting more than anything because it's a great program for farmers. And I think it's easy to forget that if we're not out there protecting it, there's a lot of other people that would like to see that go away. And to see Farm Bureau's strength, political strength, and just strength in numbers. When we had when we had calls for people to call in and talk to their senators, I mean, thousands of people's called in, and that's what grassroots is about, the power of the members. And it was exciting to see that happen last year. And it's uh, sort of interesting and exciting from those folks looking in from the outside to see not only those farmers with experience as trustees and on the board, but also some of the younger farmers getting involved. And you have a, a, a broad range of uh, experience, a broad range of ideas. Broad range of experience, ideas, and, and sizes and depth and who we are. I think sometimes you hear on the street that Farm Bureau is just big farmers. And, yeah, I'm a large farmer, but, you know, we have a beekeeper. We have a, a person that has 50 beef cows. You know, we variety that I never have imagined would be in Ohio. And uh, it's just neat to be in that, in that world and the variety of... Uh, expertise. We've been visiting with Chris Weaver, a trustee from Williams County. Chris, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. And stay with us. Back with more right after this. Automate your existing sliding doors with Propel Automation of Ohio. Automate up to 60-foot twin sliding shed or barn doors with their award-winning patented system. And now Propel Automation of Ohio is part of Ohio AgriBility Program, allowing Ohio farmers and farm families who are coping with disabilities or long-term health conditions to automate their doors. For security, safety, convenience, remember Propel Automation of Ohio. Check us out on the web at PropelOhio.com. Hi, I'm Richard Lynch. Hey, if you like the new sound coming out of Nashville with all the bro country, we're not going to get along at all. We ain't going to have any of that in our show. If you like the real country music, George, Merle, Mel, come see us. We love to have you here at the farm or anywhere around the country. We're going to come see you. Come listen to real country music. Allen Davis Insurance Agency, with 30 years commitment to the community, providing quality insurance services. Allen is a business owner and an active farmer, and he knows firsthand the pressures of running your farming operation. Call Allen today and ask about coverage for your farm, your vehicles, your equipment, crops, and more. Call 1-800-686-2148. That's 1-800-686-2148. Hello once again, everybody. We're at the 99th Annual Meeting of Ohio Farm Bureau, and Keith Stempert is our guest. Keith is Senior Vice President of Organization, and uh, Keith, that entails a lot more than what that title tells us. Uh, you're involved with a lot of, uh, well, the organization directors all over the state and, right. and those county farm bureaus. That has to uh, be a, a challenge at times and also such a, a pleasure to see how, how policy develops from the grassroots. It really is. So this is the professional team that we have here in the, the Ohio Farm Bureau that works with our county farm bureaus to make sure that policies coming forward, that programs are running as we reach out to folks and help others understand about agriculture, the ag literacy effort, if you will, just so many different things as, uh, as we work at the County Farm Bureau level. Keith, uh, you've been involved in the organization how many years now? Well, uh, next year will be 40. 
Next year we'll be 40, so yeah. So in a lot of ways, some of the folks we're working with right now, obviously, uh, you know, it's all brand new to them. And so we want to try to move the organization forward. As you mentioned here, the 99th annual meeting of the Ohio Farm Bureau, uh, headed to 100 years and just very, very exciting with uh, the strategic plan we have and, uh, and what is coming in the future for the Ohio Farm Bureau. Lots of great things. Before we talk about the future, let's talk about uh, how has Farm Bureau changed just in the approximate 40 years you've been involved? Yeah. Well, it, our members in agriculture per se, size of farms, uh, that whole growing piece of, of niche farms and direct marketing, more of that. And of course, technology. I mean, my goodness, uh, you know, I can remember some of those early regional cabinet meetings out there with members and I'd be maybe uh, carrying a TV set in and hooking up a VCR or something like that. And now, you know, with our cell phones and our, and our uh, iPads and so on and so forth, just able to bring so much rich information to our members out in those meetings. So technology, the nature of agriculture, um, and, and excited about the organization and its future. I would imagine the size of the equipment, tractors, combines, is changing, <laughs> and with that, uh, the necessity to change some of the barns and, and some of the places where we house them. The whole risk management piece, safety on the farm, uh, what we're doing, uh, just the cost of agriculture today, uh, and making sure that those pieces are insured are very, very key. So we're, we're trying to bring that message to our members, too, under our member benefit programs. Keith, uh, being a, a farm broadcaster and being involved with the National Association of Farm Broadcasting over the years, I, I know that uh, uh, th things have changed throughout the United States. And uh, here in Ohio, uh, I still say this is one of the states, one of the, the, the good states where organizations work together, no matter what that organization is, what the commodity group, what uh, be it uh, the Ohio State University, be it Extension and, and other universities and, and other farm organizations, this state tends to work together when there's a, any kind of a challenge, and that's not always true in no, other parts no, of the country. No, that's right, and you're, you're right on the mark there with that, whether it's a ballot issue or working on research collectively or so on and so forth. There really is a very positive dialogue among all the ag organizations, uh, College of Agriculture, uh, all the different entities as we try to move forward and, and, and grow a stronger agriculture here in the state of Ohio. Ag unity is actually one of those pieces listed uh, in our strategic plan moving forward, and we want to keep working at that. So, But one of those great benefits of here being here in Ohio. Well, I guess I did fail to mention uh Actually, politics uh, uh, not always is government uh, in tune with what farmers want to do. But in a case like that, that's where uh, the, the, the lobbying effort that Farm Bureau provides uh, helps get the farmers' views to that politician and makes them more educated and lets them know what kind of challenges they can help solve. That's exactly right. I think, you know, here in Farm Bureau, when you work through the policy development process and our state board evaluating the issues, staff bringing all sides of, a, of an issue forward, I think legislators downtown, uh, in state government, throughout uh, uh, the agencies and so on and so forth, kind of respect the voice of Farm Bureau for that balanced view and that thought out view of where we are. Now, we still want to be advocates for agriculture and we still want to make sure we're representing our farmer members. And a lot of that starts right at the grassroots levels where the ODs, the people that you work with, right. that's, that helps get everything started. It does, it does. So uh, we do a lot to try to train those folks and uh, we, you know, we're always reaching out to members to bring those, them into those meetings uh, and, and we try to accommodate uh, a great voice in that regard. So, yeah. Now, if anyone watching right now has any kind of questions that they would like to uh, send to you or anybody at Farm Bureau, what's the best way for them to do that? Probably go to our website, OFBF.org, and uh, go online there and, and share a message with the webmaster. Yep. Very good. Keith Stempert has been our guest. Keith, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Gary. Hi, I'm Richard Lynch. Hey, if you like the new sound coming out of Nashville with all the bro country, hmm, we're not going to get along at all. We ain't going to have any of that in our show. If you like the real country music, George, Merle, Mel, come see us. We love to have you here at the farm or anywhere around the country. We're going to come see you. Come listen to real country music. Thanks for listening.
I'm Terry McClure, a fifth generation soybean farmer. Farming can be tough, but we have the Ohio Soybean Council investing farmers' dollars to find new uses for soybeans. Their research helps develop better beans for livestock, poultry, and for people. It also helps create new products like soy based cleaning supplies and ink cartridges. Plus, cleaner burning soy biodiesel reduces our dependence on foreign oil. Soybeans are Ohio's number one agricultural export. To learn more, visit soyohio.org. Welcome back to An Ohio Country Today, and with me I have Hannah Williamson with the Ohio Soybean Council. And Hannah, we want to talk today about a value-added service for the producers, the soybean producers, well, all producers here in Ohio. Yes, um, I'm here to talk about Precision Ag Reviews. Um, this is funded by the Ohio Soybean Council, and really the the main point behind it was when talking with farmers, there's nothing like this out there right now. So farmers, when anybody goes to buy anything, they always go online and check reviews. And there's nothing like that out there for precision ag equipment today. And it can get very confusing for farmers um, when going to buy and spend a lot of money on equipment. Um, what what's good, what are people um, enjoying without that vendor bias. So with that in mind, um, we created Precision Ag Reviews. So farmers can go online and read and write reviews and connect with other farmers. And it's really that grassroots approach where um, no vendor bias, it's just farmers helping farmers. Well, you know, Hannah, we talked about this a little bit ago. You know, it's interesting because this information is really out there on the web now, but it's really not organized at all. No, not at all. And with Precision Ag Reviews, um, we've been grassroots, like meeting one-on-one -on -one with farmers and attending extension events, trying to figure out what are farmers using, what products do we need to have on our website to kind of bring it all together. So it's that one-stop shop for every farmer. Well, you know, when we were talking about not only allowing the farmers to, to post their, their, their likes and dislikes about certain equipment, what the features and benefits, you know, how, how they've benefited from it, you're also going to use some expert non-biased advice also. Yes, so also on the site, not only can you create a review or read reviews, um, you can also, we will have videos posted of other farmers talking about um, what equipment they're using on their farms and also having experts from the industry um, come on and talk about future trends for farmers to look out for and also how to get the most money out of your farm. Well, you know, talking about experts, you, as a matter of fact, you have a video from, uh, from somebody from uh, Ohio State University. Yes, um, John Fulton, he is very knowledgeable at The Ohio State University, and we look to have some more video segments from him um, talking with farmers. Well, you know, Hannah, it, this, this website and everything is, is all great, and, and, it's, and, you know, the Ohio Soybean Council, is, it, this is actually something that are, it was a result of talking with board members from the Soybean Council. This does more for Ohio farmers, though. It is a value added. Yes, um, we want farmers to come and find their products and get that information they're looking for without having to talk to a salesperson or um, dealing with maybe just their local dealership because they have just been used to that. So, well, you know, when I when we talk about uh, the the soybean checkoff and why it's important to belong to the Ohio Soybean Council, right here, right here is one one reason that uh, produ uh, the producers can't argue about. Yes, this is literally farmers helping farmers. Um, soybean farmers had this, soybean board members had this in their in their brain kind of going, we need some sort of resource for farmers so that they know what type of equipment to buy, know what they like, um, and that's kind of what we've been working towards. Well, Hannah, if somebody wanted to find out more information about this product, where can they go? Um, please visit precisionagreviews.com. And um, we hope that you check us out. And if you have any questions, contact us. We love to hear from farmers. We want your feedback. If you have a question on anything, we are more than happy to accommodate you. Well, Hannah, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. Fence Row Records proudly presents Mending Fences, the latest pure country album from Richard Lynch, featuring a beautiful duet with Rhonda Vincent. Available now at all fine music outlets and richardlynchband.com. 
That's Mending Fences from Richard Lynch. Pick up your copy today and check out our website at richardlynchband.com. United Equity, Inc. is your locally owned farm-based cooperative. For agronomic services, we offer seed and a full line of dry and liquid fertilizer, as well as soil sampling by soil type, grid, or management zone to best utilize your fertilizer application. Call us to discuss agronomic services customized for you. Reach your best yields with United Equity, serving Allen, Augleys, Mercer, Putnam, and Van Wert counties. Visit us on the web at unitedequityinc.com. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to In Ohio Country Today. And we're with a young man here from Coldwater, Ohio. His name is Austin Minchover. And Austin, tell us a little bit about your experience with FFA. We're here at the beautiful Mercer County uh, Fair. And of course, we're here with this restored Oliver that you have been working on. Before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about your experiences with FFA, how long you've been involved and what you're doing in that aspect of things to uh, continue your career in agriculture. I've been in FFA for about four years now. This will be my fourth year going on. Uh, I've been in multiple things. I've been in uh, soil judging, which we t test the land to see if it's fit for crops or see if it's fit for buildings like this one behind us. Uh, I also go to uh, national convention, state convention, FFA camp. I try to get involved as much as I can, just trying to be able to experience some of the FFA things that they uh, offer. And in future, I really rather, I want to help on um, my grandpa's farm again. I want to be able to uh, raise my own cattle, raise my own corn, soybeans. I want to just have my farm eventually, just like every else, everybody else in Mercer County. They want to make it big and farming. <laughs> well, we know Mercer County is one of the largest with regards to agricultural receipts here in the state of Ohio, if not uh, the nation. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of activity from our crops to our livestock, and that's something that you do on a full-time basis and want to continue to do. But you have a little something on the side that's really cool. Tell us a little bit, little bit about this, Oliver, how this came to fruition and what it means to you. This, Oliver, was my grandfather's first tractor they had on the farm. What it means to me is it shows dedication. It shows hard work. It shows that someone had a, their mind set on something they were able to do it. And I wanted to bring it back to where it was when they got it new and when they cherished it. Whenever we got it, it wasn't the best of shape. It was kind of beat up. It was missing parts. It, it needed some help. And I figured to help my grandfather out for a good birthday present is to redo it and give it back to him as a happy birthday. So what we did, we had to find the front grill parts because they didn't. it didn't come with it. The front hood or the top of the hood was all beat up and because it used to have a loader on it, but I wasn't able to rebuild the cylinders in time for the fair, so that's why we don't have the loader on it now. So it was lifting up logs, and it was lifting up manure and everything, so it's something's going to fall on it, and sure enough, it fell on it, so we had to straighten out the metal, repaint it, make it look pretty again. And The way we painted it, though, is also not not only just for the show mere factor as the shininess and the cleansing cleanliness of it but also for the fact that if grandpa wanted to he could still go out and use it and not afraid to get it dirty not afraid to scratch it it's a farm tractor we paint it to where you can use it but also show it off and be proud of it you know that's one of the things that i think is very unique about this it's not just a show tractor it's something that actually is part of the business and you keep it active and in use on the farm yeah, we sure do. Sometimes it's pushing snow. Sometimes it's just out driving around. And sometimes I'll bring it over to my other grandfather's help and house and help haul manure with it or help grind feed or do whatever we need to do with it. Maybe sometimes even bale hay. Well, Austin, let's talk about how uh, the domino effect of farming takes place. Of course, you know, you're born and raised on the farm. You get involved in FFA. You get involved in a project like this. You use this on the farm and it's active and something that means a lot to you and the personal relationship that you have, not only with this business, but with this tractor. 
Uh, the personal relationship I have with this tractor is it's my grandfather's. I take pride in it. I really enjoy old tractors. I mean, I'm a collector of them myself. I have half a dozen tractors at home that I own and we work, me and my stepfather worked on or me and my buddy have worked on. So I take pride in these. I, I'd like to get a couple more of these, obviously, before I get out of high school, but uh, it really means a lot to me to be able to do things like this for other people and for my family. It means that they're willing to trust what I can do and they know that it's in good hands. It's just a really cool adventure that I love to be able to do yeah. every day. Yeah, right on. It's pretty exciting to know that agriculture is in good hands with farming youth like Austin here who take seriously his heritage and continue the heritage of farming, not only on the farm, but with a new business like this. And wish you a lot of luck, Austin. Thanks for joining us. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Fence Row Records proudly presents Somewhere Mending Fences, the latest pure country album from Richard Lynch, featuring a beautiful duet with Rhonda Vincent. Back in love again. Available now at all fine music outlets and richardlynchband.com. That's Mending Fences from Richard Lynch. Pick up your copy today and check out our website at richardlynchband.com. Hi, I'm Richard Lynch. Hey, if you like the new sound coming out of Nashville with all the bro country, we're not going to get along at all. We ain't going to have any of that in our show. If you like the real country music, George, Merle, Mel, come see us. We love to have you here at the farm or anywhere around the country. We're going to come see you. Come listen to real country music. Allen Davis Insurance Agency, with 30 years commitment to the community, providing quality insurance services. Allen is a business owner and an active farmer. And he knows firsthand the pressures of running your farming operation. Call Allen today and ask about coverage for your farm, your vehicles, your equipment, crops, and more. Call 1-800-686-2148. That's 1-800-686-2148. Hey, that's going to do it for this week's edition of In Ohio Country Today. For more information, check us out on the web at inohiocountry.com. That's inohiocountry.com. Have a good day, everybody.